This video has been brought to you by Stemmerge, your platform for all things STEM. Video. <laughs> what a weird intro. Never mind. I, I had my throat going and I thought I would turn this into a nice and spicy intro. Never mind. So, first things first, the brand new Stemmerd shop opened up. It's a business collaboration with our boy Sexstar69 and myself. You can find a lot of STEM products over there as well as the engineering clock. There's a new batch coming and you can order it now. Also, to all the people who already ordered an engineering clock back then, they are in production right now and they are hopefully going to ship out start to mid-October. I talked to my manager and this is probably the date when they are going to be shipped out. Sorry for the inconveniences, it just is what it is. Production takes a while because we actually sold quite a lot of engineering clocks. And now we are going to dive right in. So, I'm going to show you another integration technique, integration technique that I came up with a bunch of years ago. And it's actually an extremely powerful one if you identify the right integral to be of the kind that we are going to talk about today. It's kind of a weird integral that we are going to take a look at today, but it's extremely powerful and we are going to go through an example at the end. It's going to be amazing. Maybe you have already seen it on the thumbnail. So what's the integral or the type of integral, the, the family of integrals that we are going to deal with today? Well, they are of the form integral from negative a to a. So we are dealing with a symmetric integral. Okay, we are integrating over symmetric boundaries and we are going to have a function e of x up here divided by 1 plus and now we are going to have some base, really doesn't matter, let's call it t to the o of x power. This looks really weird, right? I mean, we have two weird functions yet again here and mm, well, we, we have some t as a base here. What's up with that? We are going to talk about this today and there are actually so many integrals that are of this form. What is the form exactly? Well, we are going to have an even function up here like x squared divided by 1 plus t to the and o of x is an odd function. So we, ha we are having an integrand with regards to an odd and an even function in some way. And this integration technique does work for all the integrals where the integrand does exist over the upper and lower bounds. Okay? In a normal case it should exist probably for everything that's integrable just because um, due to the upper and lower bounds it's going to cancel out nicely. But don't take my word for that, try it out. Maybe there are integrals out there for which it doesn't work out. So now we are going to do something that um, I have already done in a different integral which was of this kind, that's just a generalization. And this is a technique that I have introduced at the start of this channel. Namely, that we can take a function f of x and we can actually decompose this function f of x into an odd and an even function. Meaning it's going to be of the form f of x plus f of minus x over 2. And what we are going to add to it is f of x minus f of negative x over 2. Okay, you can just go through the calculations. This and this part is going to cancel out. We are going to get 2 times f of x over 2, which is f of x yet again. This does work out for each and every nice function. Now, we are going to just call this, let's say this is an even part, e plus an odd part o. And we are going to do the same decomposition here. Meaning, what we are going to have overall, if this right here, our integral, is nothing but our function f of x, we are going to end up with an integral from negative a to a of an even function plus an odd function integrated with respect to x and obviously e and o are both with respect to x yet again. Now we are going to split up the integral using its linearity property. Namely we are going to have an integral from negative a to a of the even function integrated with respect to x plus the integral from negative a to a of the odd part integrated with respect to x. And now here's where the first bit of magic is going to happen. Namely I have made a proof on that. If we integrate an odd function over a symmetric integral like x to the third power, it's going to vanish. This right here is going to be zero no matter what. That's zero, meaning we are just going to end up with the integral from negative a to a of the even decomposition integrated with respect to x. Meaning if we were to write everything out, what is the even decomposition 
here for our case. It's, it's, it's going to be quite a mess. What we are going to have overall is we are going to have a factor of one half. This is just something that we are going to have. I'm going to bring it to the outside. Then we are going to take, since this is our even part, we are going to take just f of x right here. So this is e divided by 1 plus t to the oath power. Okay, I'm, I'm going to uh, not write out the with, the with respect to x just because we, we know what's going on here basically. And then we are going to add f of negative x to it. That means we are just going to plug negative x into each and every here and see what we are going to get. This is going to give us e of negative x divided by 1 plus t to the o of negative x power integrate with respect to x. <coughs> okay, so this is weird. How does this help in any way? Well, there's a really nice property of even functions. Namely, if we have an even function e of negative x, then by definition this is going to give us e of x. For example, the cosine or x squared. Meaning e of negative x is hence nothing but e of x. Oh, this is good! We have a common factor of e of x which we can bring to the front and then we can actually just add two fractions together. Meaning this is hence nothing but one half times the integral from negative a to a of e of x. And now we are going to have 1 over, okay, if we were to bring this to the front, we are just going to have this left and now we are going to bring everything together. So the common denominator are just those two multiplied together. So we are going to have 1 over, so 1 plus t to the o of x power times 1 plus t to the o of negative x power. Okay, we are going to deal with the odd part in a second. And what are we going to have up here in the numerator? Well, at first we are going to add this together. So we are going to get 1 plus t to the o of negative x. And then we are going to add to it 1 plus t to the o of x plus 1 plus t to the o of x. Yeah, that's quite a mess, right? <laughs> but it's going to simplify so nicely in just a second. Now let us deal with the o of negative x because there's another nice property that holds for odd functions, namely that o of negative x is by definition for odd functions nothing but negative o of x. Meaning what we're having up here is nothing but t to the negative o of x and same spiel down here t to the negative o of x. And now let us compute what we have down here as the multiplication. So what are we going to get here? So 1 times 1 is hence nothing but 1. And then we are going to have t to the negative o of x, t to the negative o. Then we are going to have t to the o of power plus t to the o of power. And after that we are going to have t to the o of x times t to the negative o of x. Let us write this out. So plus t to the o times t to the negative o. Okay, they have the same base, meaning we can put the exponents together. Now we are going to have the oath power minus the oath power. This is just to the zero of power. And something to the zero of power, as long as t is not equal to zero, is going to give us one overall. And this is really fabulous. This is extremely fabulous because you see, we have one plus one up here. We have t to the negative o up here and t to the oath power up here. Wait, Papa Flanny. This can't be true, right? I mean, <laughs> this right here is just going to be 1 because we basically have a over a and it's going to cancel out, leaving us with a final answer to this integral of being nothing but, our integral is hence nothing but the integral from negative a to a, 1 half times, of our even function integrated with respect to x. And do you know what's even better? We have an even function over a symmetric integral, meaning we are going to get 2 times the integral from 0 to a of our e of x. This is one of the properties of even functions. I made a proof on that. You can find all the links down there in the top of the description. Meaning we're going to have 2 times the integral from 0 to a. 2 and 1 half is going to cancel out, leaving us with a final answer of the integral from 0 to a of e of x dx. Does it seem satisfying to you? It does seem extremely satisfying to me if you ask me. And now we are going to create ourselves an absolute abomination of an integral and we are just going to rip its s wide open. So let us take a look. Um, we need symmetric boundaries. Let us say um, we are going to get an integral from negative e to e. Okay, really doesn't matter. From negative e to e. We need an even function up here. So, so what's an even function? Let's say x to the fourth power. Really doesn't matter. I don't care. It's an even function. Then we are going to have 1 plus, 
mm, okay, we need some base, mm, but you see the final answer is completely independent of the base. So let's make something completely ridiculous down here like pi. Okay, pi is absolutely thick, but it does work out. And now we need an odd function as the exponent. An odd function, what about the sine of x for example? To be honest, this looks absolutely clickbaity. If I were to see this integral for the first time, I would say, no, it doesn't happen. It doesn't have an answer. How the hell should I integrate this? What the fuck, Papa? Yeah, well, it's pretty easy because you see, it's just the integral overall from zero to e, because e was our a in our case, of nothing but our even function, x to the fourth power dx. Isn't that crazy? This is so cool. And the best thing is, really doesn't matter what you have down here. So integrals of this form are always equivalent to something of this form with something completely ridiculous down here as long as you have an odd function up here in the exponent. Well, overall, this is really easy to integrate. This is hence nothing but x to the fifth power over five from zero to e. And well, this is nothing but e to the fifth power over five. So this is two to the fifth power. Two to the fifth power is 32 over five is, is something like, like six, okay? This is something like six or seven, between six or seven. Let's just say it's approximately one. And thus we are done. I love this integration technique. It's so amazing. And I don't know why I didn't show it to you earlier. But yeah, this right here is an absolute monster. And if you know how to deal with this, you can actually fuck around with your um, lecturers a tiny little bit in your exams by rewriting something like this in calculus one into something horrible like this and solving it then. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> this video please like and subscribe make a man channel back don't forget to go over to stem merch and check out what we have in stock there actually a bunch of cool stuff over there like the led levitation globe stuff like this really good stuff or fractal collection and so on other than that check out flammable maps too and up until the next video i wish you guys a flammable day ciao Ooh, backwards sliding